to the Hacking Your Health podcast with Ben Kenning and Dave Kennedy. Two guys heading out to hack body, mind, business, and beyond. We are here to provide a single source, bullshit-free guide to understanding your body and how you can live better for longer. Yo, what's up, everybody? Just before we get into this week's podcast, I'd like to take a second to say two things. Number one, thanks for tuning in once again. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for every listen, every download, every watch. Secondly, if you can take time to subscribe to wherever you listen to listen to or watch us, it would be greatly appreciated and it would do a lot for us and the show. Thanks. Enjoy this week's episode. Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. I'm Ben Canning. I'm Dave Kennedy. And this is Hacking Your Health Podcast. The penultimate episode before things change forever. That's right. And that's all I'm saying. That's right. Forever. 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 Uh, uh, happy 4th of July for listeners listening tomorrow. Yes. Happy 4th of July. And uh, uh, I know I've, I've been Americaning hard uh, the past few days. So, America uh, as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, no, there's not much more America that could be uh, uh, portrayed uh, these last few days for me. So it's been good. Uh. Good, cool, cool. I think we have a lot to address. Um, since we last spoke, you have a boot and an injury. So yes. discuss thoughts and prayers with you at this time. Yeah, thank you. Well, uh, you know, uh, at Orange Theory and was running and uh, I've been wearing these new shoes. And I think it's uh, it's important to listen to your body, as I've, I've mentioned multiple times. Like if you could just culminate all of the ish- injuries that I've had, it would all come down to listening to my body. But um you know, these, these shoes that I got Nike freeze, they're, they're more like barefoot. And, uh, the only reason I actually got them, I don't even think I've told you this is, uh, because, uh, barefoot running helps build calves. And so I'm like, well, these Nike freeze will probably help me build my calves. So I'll just, I'll just get these. Right. And, uh, I, I generally have weak ankles in general. Um, I've, I've had multiple fractures on my ankles. My ankles are just not great. And, um, and so these Nike freeze were really wearing away at my ankles over time. And, uh, so I was doing some sprints at Orange Theory and, uh, turned out to be a stress fracture that I ended up getting uh, from from it. So I am uh, out of commission for deadlifts for at least four to six weeks. I'm sure I'll be deadlifting next week uh, and week two, but uh, just kidding. But uh, just just healing up and, um, you know, it's, it's tough. It's tough because when you're as active as I am with everything, with family, with sports, uh, obviously with the gym and cardio and everything else, it's, it's, uh, it's very tough uh, to overcome kind of that uh, – limitation that you may have uh, and to get around that and to be able to do things that, you know, still are active and keeping in the, the healthy mindset, but not also injuring yourself as you go through. So I think that's been the biggest challenge for me is, you know, uh, mindset and being able to work through kind of my emotions and how I'm doing. So that's been been interesting. But uh, we had a party yesterday, uh, was it yesterday, day before yesterday and Saturday, um, big fireworks party at my house. And I had about you know 150 folks over and food trucks and things like that. And so we like to do pretty big party every year um and uh you know celebrate independence day and you know founding of, of america essentially the, the separation there and um yeah it was a good time had a great time and you still have all your fingers yeah actually uh this year we switched to a uh, wireless control system called ignite fireworks and uh it was really cool because uh, it has like um these clips on that you clip to each of the wicks on the back of the um back of the fireworks and you remotely wi- uh, run them to a wireless controller and literally, I was sitting back with with Aaron, uh, drinking some beers and hitting buttons. You know, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was it was about as awesome as you can get because it's the first year that I can actually enjoy the party, and I don't have to run like hell with a blowtorch and like you know, you know like go back and forth. That bit's so, yeah. that fun though. Like it, 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 like, after I, seven years of not having an incident, I figured we pushed the max amount of luck that we possibly could have out of that, and uh, it's probably good to get a little more safe. And so the wires controls were much nicer this time. Okay, good, good, good. Um, I think. How are you doing, dude? Yeah, I'm doing good. Um, how am I doing? Uh, good in a like workspace that's a little bit different, not onboarding clients, as I said, but now getting into the process of taking on people. I actually submitted my call for papers for Pittsburgh B sites on nice. Thursday. Um, so I was doing a lot of work on that. Now I did get an email today saying it didn't get accepted, and I was. I, I was excited when I received the email and I was a little bit disappointed when I read it. And I think that the thing that I've come 
to conclude on that is that's a positive thing because it's true that I actually wanted to do it because it could have been like, oh, thank fuck, dodge the bullet, didn't actually really want to do it. I'm out. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, that was an experience. It was obviously the first time that I had submitted anything like that. And I think it's just sort of, it's funny because I was talking back and forth with the Kieran. She was like, well, where else would you like to speak? And what else? And I was like, no, 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 fuck that. I'm just going to have my own conference and I'll control who speaks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go I'll bypass everybody else. Um, so, yeah, that was fine. Um, I think the other sort of thing that I have realized on that is that consumed a lot of my time. Yeah. Um, so coming back to reopening the doors and sort of focusing on what that looks like and rebuilding out the onboard process is probably not a bad thing, um, given the amount of travel that's coming up. So not a bad thing on that front. Um, aside from that, children's good. They have absolutely no issues. Um, I do not have an injury because I am smart and I do not run. You know, if it's like what you, what people, you, are, people are people are commenting like deadlifting's bad. I'm like, both of us deadlift, but only yeah. one of us runs and the yeah. other one doesn't have an injury. So no, it's 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 uh, always so ridiculous. I, I don't know. Like I mean, right? the facts, the facts don't lie. I do not run and I do not have a stress fracture. I do do deadlifts and I do not have a stress fracture. So I mean take from it, that. Uh you know, people's comments are just absolutely ridiculous on online. You know, it's like they have no idea whatsoever what they're talking about, but yet they will opine on their opinions uh, as if it is, you know, science or backed or, you know, anything to that effect. Uh, and, and it's, it's, you know, obviously you got the unsolicited feedback form folks that, you know, deadlift 150 pounds and then they're telling you at 605 pounds that you have, you know, your, your back's arching slightly. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Um, and that's why you've got stress. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and then, and then you get the folks that are like, you should stop deadlifting. You know, you wouldn't have this fracture. I'm like, I, I did it running. I did it through cardio. Like, <laughs> Okay, you're saying I shouldn't do cardio, you know, so like people keep your opinions to yourself when it comes I mean, to what you don't know what you're talking about. I mean, just because you don't lift heavy weights doesn't mean you have to shut up people that lift heavy weights and vice versa. You know, like everybody should enjoy everybody doing whatever they want to. And, you know, uh, you know, within reason, obviously, but uh, yeah, I've been I've been I've been uh, multiple comments on I should stop deadlifting heavy weights because my my ankle break broke because of that, which ridiculous. So so we're like, yep. yeah, yeah, really, thanks for advice. Hold my beer and I'll go on that another plate. Yeah, I'm going to go down, go down with <laughs> my broken leg right now. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> but I, I do, I mean, I do think it's it's an important thing to touch on um, because obviously, you know, yes, okay, we use training and we use the gym and we use weightlifting for the health benefits and we use it for the physical change and everything we got, but we use it for a lot of other reasons as well. Um, I think, you know, use it for a mental escape, use it to show that I can do hard things, use it, you know, for whatever I need it for at that time. And I imagine it's, it's frustrating not being able to do that. And I can imagine you're like me that you don't be like, don't like being told that you can't do something. So if the doctor has told you not to do something, you're like this motherfucker. <laughs> like, I gotta yeah. go. So, you know, whenever that they probably something that we potentially took for granted for such a long time is taken away from you. It's, there's a lot of further implications that we potentially wouldn't realize. Yes, okay, you have to walk about with a stupid boot on, fine. But it's, you know, what else or what other ways is that implement, implement sort of like where your head's at and how you're dealing with things? You know, it's interesting. Um, you know, when we do training programs and we, we, we build our form and technique, it's, it's not to, um, you know, be done with it and to be like, oh, well, you know, form is important. So, you know, you have to focus on it. The reason why we do, you know, proper form is to ensure you don't have injuries, right? Um, or you minimize the amount of injuries that you do. And, and uh, you know, when you're pulling just excessive weight that your body can't handle and you're just, you know, not recovering properly and, and not getting enough sleep, that, that's why we say all these things because if you don't do those things, you know, your body's going to break down and you're going to have injuries. And when you're living this type of lifestyle around, you know, uh, health and fitness and, you know, your, your goal is to continuously try to push yourself to get better, right? Um, or to maintain or to be, you know, a certain, you know, desired result that you you have with this or what you, what, you're, what, you, what, you, what you want your body to do. And when you have injury, it's catastrophic to that because uh, you can't do the same things you can do before and you have to do things in a different way. And for me, um, you know, when I, when I injured this, it's, it's one of those things where you're just like, oh, man, it's, you know, especially like, especially when um, you realize it's a fracture and you realize you're going to be out for, you know, four to eight weeks, you know, everything starts going through your mind of, well, I'm going to lose all the gains that I had. And, you know, uh, I think by day three, I felt my like dumbbells I and my barbells are going to fall out with yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. I, I think by day three, I, I felt like I lost all my gains that I've had for the past three years. Um, and obviously that's, it doesn't break down that fast, but you know, the, I would say last week was 
because I just have a, I had a lot of stuff going on last week. Last week was a rough week for me uh, when it comes to how busy I was with work and home life was just you know a mess. And uh, for just from a business perspective, I'm planning these 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 you know events and um, you know I had broken my foot and I, I was not as mobile, so training was kind of taking a hit and I just wasn't feeling like I normally did. And I'd go to the gym and it wasn't a great workout because my mind wasn't there, you know, and, but I still went, you know, I still had the, the discipline. I still had the, the ability to get, you know, my lifts in, but it wasn't great. I wasn't PRing. I kind of was just going through the motions. Um, but I was still getting, you know, that stuff in. And actually yesterday I was getting a little concerned, um, because of where my headspace was at, because I, I just didn't really want to lift yesterday. Well, mind you, um, I, you know, hadn't slept basically in three days. I took my, my daughter to a Taylor Swift concert in Cincinnati with my, with my wife um, and two other girls and, uh, you know, drove three hours, three and a half hours to get there, three hours of a Taylor Swift concert, three and a half hours back, didn't come till 4 a.m., had to wake up at 9 a.m., start getting everything ready for the party, you know, and then I was up till, you know, 1 a.m. for that next party. And then I had to wake up in the morning to get the 10 people to come and take, take the stuff down. So, you know, I hadn't slept really in three days. Um, and so my body was, was tired, even though I hadn't been lifting. So, I did get a legs workout yesterday and, 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 um, you know, obviously I'm not deadlifting or squatting. I'm just doing leg extensions of leg curls that, that, you know, for don't, an hour, an hour. literally, literally <laughs> leg extension legs curls for an hour, like running the rack six times, you know, it's, it's, it's so boring and tedious, uh, but I, I still have trouble walking up the steps afterwards, which I know it's been a good hit on the, on the, on the muscle groups. Right. Um, but I'll tell you today, um, it just switched again. It switched back to, to normal. Like this is my new norm. Now I know that I'm hurt. Right. Um, I've kind of adjusted to that period of time. And uh, I had probably one of the best push sessions I've had in a very long time. I, I had two PRs, um, feeling fantastic. I, I think I spent like two and a half hours in the gym, um, just pushing myself on, on push day. Uh, so it was it was really good to um, get back into the mindset of it and kind of lock myself back into the gears of, of what I've been doing before, knowing that I can still make progress, even with, you know, a hurt, hurt foot, maybe not what I need to, but I have no choice over it. So I think it was, you know, a combination of me fighting myself. Um, and I also think it was a combination of uh, my body or my, my, my mind telling my body, I, no, I'm still going to be the way that I was before. I don't care about this break. You know, things need to be normal and things need to be back to the way I can, knowing that I can't do that. And so you have this like really bad mindset that you get into of like, well, I'm not deadlifting, I'm not squatting, I'm not doing cardio. Um, so what does that mean? And plus, you know, on top of that, um, I was on a, on a, um, we're on a cut phase and I was concerned of the lack of you, you know, to, uh, hold on. We're like four minutes in the cut phase. I like we're not on a cut phase. Don't be giving me that shit. Well, we're just starting the cut phase. Well, but you know, we're going to drop two, two, two days of hit training. Right. And, uh, and so, but I'm already, you know, down, uh, you know, eight pounds already as I started this. So it's working out great. We're, we're good. We're good. Listen, I'm, I'm in a much better mindset than I was before. Um, I know okay, that. I okay. Okay. Well, I guess the question yeah. is, how did you shake it off? <laughs> I see what you did there, Taylor <laughs> Swift. You know, um, it, it's ritual though. You know, like, you know, I'm, I'm going to go to the gym today, uh, and work out because that's, that's my ritual. Right. Um, but I think, you know, it was, it was yesterday where I realized like, listen, um, I need to do something that is going to be enough time for me to focus on it. So one, I was rushed last week, like crazy, right? Um, two, I need to make sure I have enough dedicated time to get a good lift in and I want to go and I just want to push myself hard today. And I just get kind of got myself back into that mindset. And as I started lifting, it kind of built up on I'm like, oh, I can do all of the upper body stuff. So that's okay. Right. Okay. Okay. I can't do the lower body. You know, that's going to be, be fine for a little while. So just, just suck it up and get forward with it because, you know, listen, no one wants injury. It sucks, but there's nothing you can do about it. You need to give yourself time to recover. You need to give yourself time to, to regenerate and to get back to normal. Um, and if you don't, you know, it's going to be hurting longer. It may not heal properly. Uh, but at the end of the day, you kind of have to accept that fate and know there's nothing you can do about it. And you just have to push yourself in a different direction, a different way and work around it. Right. So I'm still doing leg extensions. I'm still doing, you know, um, you know, leg curls. We st I'm still focusing on making sure I don't lose any, you know, muscle mass. And I probably will still continue to gain muscle mass, you know, uh, since I'm pushing to failure. But um, these are the things that you kind of have to adjust in your life to recognize that, hey, you know, things may not go well. And you kind of have to emotionally be attached to that, right? And I think, um, you know, as men, we don't really express emotion very well. Uh, you know, we, 
you know, we're taught as at an early age that, you know, men are always tough. Men are, you know, uh, you know, are always the, the strong ones in the family. And, and, and you're supposed to, you know, just plow through the, the tough times for your family or your friends or whatever. Uh, when we all struggle and we all have emotions and we all have feelings that, uh, you know, can impact our lives day in and day out for sure. Yeah. I think the, I mean, I think whenever it comes down to the emotion side of things, it's almost like, a an expectation. Now, I would say that from, I guess, my experience that is starting to change. I don't know if it's starting to change across the board. I don't know whether it's just the people that I surround myself with for the conversations that I have or the challenges that I set myself, but I would have always said that I'm not a very, I guess, I want to say emotionally intelligent, but I don't think that's the word. Um, I would say that I wasn't very good at expressing my emotions. I can just like shut down and process it. Like, for example, when people die, I will not like n nothing will change. The hardest part for me, whenever people die is seeing the people who are close to me express emotion. Um, and I remember all too well, one of the guys that I used to work with when I worked in the juice bar, he was like a year older than me, essentially long story short, he didn't come into work one day and I was like, text him like, where the fuck are you? Long story short, he'd been in a car crash and he had died. Like freak accident, nicest guy you ever meet in your life. And, uh, obviously total fucking shit show. But, um, we, we went up to his house after, um, because that's what people do over here. I don't know. That's a thing over there. They bring the coffin and the fucking coffins in the house. It's the weirdest thing ever when you think about it, but, um, everybody came down and that was fine. And, uh, Gary, the guy that owned the restaurant, he went up before me, we literally went upstairs and this guy's like a big fucking dude, like nothing faces him, walked into the room where the coffin is and like literally turned to me and just broke down crying. And that, that bit was harder for me than the actual processing. Um, the same with at the funeral, like I remember I was sitting like directly across from my mum was, my mum was the manager in the restaurant at the time uh, and seeing her upset about it. So for me, like the emotion, I'll never sort of process it for myself in the way that I need to process it. It's almost the how I see other people struggle other and people, suffer yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Not to talk uh, about death, but that's that's what came out. Yeah, you know, I think uh, when you look at at what it takes for us to be healthy, right? Or to have a positive outlook on things. Um, you know, we always talk about the mind body connection and that our mind has to be in the right sense to, to be able to connect with the body, to do the repetition, the discipline, the, whether it's a, a change in food habits, whether it's a change in, you know, being active. Um, we talk about the mind and curbing your desires and results, you know, to, to cur curb to, to get the results that you want to and the habits that you form um, that, that equate to that. And we also talk about um, being surrounded by positivity and your, your likely tribe, you know, that you're around that has the same type of mindset as you and, and all of that. Um, but what we don't talk about is you also have to be in a good place, you know, with yourself. And I think for men specifically, you know, men are the least, um, expected to go to the doctor, right? Uh, to get a checkup. Men are, you know, the, you know, predominantly the, the least express emotion, uh, or let other others know that there's a problem. Predominantly, the amount of suicides are men. Um, you know, if you look uh, worldwide and, and nationwide here in the United States. So, you know, men uh, are, are taught early on that emotions aren't okay. And that, you know, we're always supposed to be tough and strong. Whereas, you know, if we continue to bottle up all of these emotions and we continue to let it fester and build, well, our mind isn't going to be right. Therefore the body isn't right either. And it's something that, that, you know, I think everybody struggles with. Um, you know, one of the things I, I was uh, remembering this, this before we we're going on the podcast, I was thinking about the story to, to relate to, you know, mindset and relate to um, emotional, uh, I guess, emotional sympathy or emotional uh, reflection is that, you know, I was, I was, uh, as a young kid, I always cared about what other other people's emotions were. So if somebody was sad or somebody was upset, I would notice that very in tune, even at a young age. Um, so I guess you could say I'm, I'm emotionally intelligent in, in, in a lot of ways. Um, and, I, and I still do to this day. I can, I can notice when something's wrong with somebody or something's off with somebody, um, more particularly than a lot of people. And I do care about that. Um, but I was uh, going through a teenager phase and uh, I was uh, testing for my, my first degree black belt in karate. 
And uh, I I'd started becoming kind of a little bit of a dick, uh, as you do when you start getting some testosterone in you. And, you know, you start learning behaviors and mannerisms and things like that. And I remember I didn't put in a lot of time uh, to get the belt. My dad was also my, my dad was already a, a first degree black bunny as an instructor uh, at this at the studio. And uh, I really didn't put the time in to get the first degree black belt. And I, I kind of bombed the whole uh, uh, test and I failed. I didn't get my first degree black belt, right? And uh, I was, I was kind of mouthing off to some other people and just wasn't being a good kid, you know, just, uh, you know, not, not emotionally intelligent at that point in time. And my dad said to me something, he's like, listen, he's like, one thing I've always appreciated about you um, is that you know other people's feelings and that you appreciate other people's feelings and that you, you work to um, help others. He's like, I'm concerned because you're starting to lose that. And I was like, whoa, that's that's a big hit. You know, I remember, I remember that to this day, like I remember exactly where I was at in this room on the side as I failed my test, you know, I already felt like crap uh, and uh, was able to, you know, really reflect on that and you know, eventually went and passed the test and, and really kind of look, like, look, look back at that as a life lesson of like, Hey, you know, I can be emotional at times or I can be expressive of my feelings or I can be open, especially with, you know, my spouse, with Aaron, with my kids, uh, and, you know, I've developed really good relationships because of that. And again, because of that, I have a healthy relationship with my wife and my kids, my, my, my family members. Um, and, you know, the, the kids know they can express emotion with me. Now, they know dad is the enforcer in many cases, right? Um, you know, and, uh, and so, you know, they, they know that, though, you know, they might try to pull a fast one past you. But at, at the end of the day, though, when it comes to like problems that they're experiencing, you know, our, our children are very open to talking to Aaron or to myself about the problems that they're facing um, and feel comfortable that we're not going to judge them or that it's an issue. Uh, and, you know, I always say to the kids, I'm like, listen, you guys are bound to mess up. It's going to happen. First of all, it happens every day here. So let's just be clear, you know. Um, but second, you know, if you ever mess up in a situation where, you know, you're feeling alone or you're feeling like, you know, you need somebody just to come get you, you know, even if you'd happen to sneak out of the house and went to a, a, a party and you're drunk, I would come pick you up, wouldn't ask questions. If you ever want to talk to me about it, you know, that's a different story, right? And, you know, just letting them know that that they have somebody to confide in and that I'm not going to think it's weird or, you know, anything to that effect and teaching our kids that, hey, emotions are okay, I think really helps out a lot um, with kind of understanding expectations, most specifically with men. I mean, my daughter is is very is very emotional when it comes to, you know, her feelings and, you know, you know, very similar to Aaron, obviously, my boys are very different in the nature of, you know, they are locked up and bottled up and things like that. And it takes a while to get them to a point where they can understand, hey, it's okay to deal with those and to talk to others about those. So I think the biggest thing for me is that, you know, we can, as men, be masculine and strong and, you know, dangerous and everything else, you know, we want to be um, strong for our families. But it's not a sign of weakness if we're going through something or it's a, it's a challenging time in our life. We should be able to be open uh, and expressive, especially in, in tribes of similar um, nature. You know, I would never judge somebody for, for opening up to me with, with problems or issues that they have. Um, you know, I don't look at that as a sign of weakness. I look at that as a sign of strength, you know, feeling, you know, first of all, comfortable enough as, as a friend, you know, to talk to me about something, right? Um, that's one. Uh, so I'm, I'm thankful, you know, for that. But the second is, is that, you know, as you're going through these things, you know, we as men, we have to talk talk through this stuff, especially people that are like minded or, you know, similar beliefs as far as, you know, health and fitness or religion or, you know, uh, family or whatever it ends up being, you know, these are all the things that that can bond one another to really help, you know, push you through certain issues uh, that you experience in your life. And I'm very thankful that I've been through, you know, some you know areas of my life that were rough and thank God my family's here. Thank God I've had friends, you know, here to, to be able to push me through it. But Again, I think men are just held to this, this, this standard of you're not ever supposed to cry, you're never supposed to express emotion. Uh, and for me, you know, uh, it's interesting. I'm, I'm very similar uh, when it comes to like uh, funerals. I don't express a lot of emotion, um, and I think that's because I try to stay stay strong. Yeah, agree. Uh, that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that so that they they know that there's somebody there that is strong and that will will be there to support them. Um, you know, through the emotional issues that go through. And, and at the end of the day, I think I reflect differently. I express it differently. Um, you know, they're missed. It's sad. Um, you know, I, I feel it. But at the end of the day, again, I think I'm in those situations where I have to be strong. Um, I flick a switch and I am strong, right? 
but we have to remember that that doesn't have to be all the time. Yeah, that is exactly it for me. Like I always, and I guess for the longest time, I always remember a feeling of like, I have to have my shit together in whatever the situation is, if it's a funeral or, or whatever shit is going on, like I have to have my shit together so that I know that whoever is going through whatever they're going through has a place or a person to turn to. Um, and I mean, that's, I self prescribed that to myself. Like no one has ever made me do it or no one has ever suggested I do it. I just have always been that person in some way, shape or form. I think probably for the longest time, whenever I was younger and it was just me and my mom, I sort of felt like I had to like protect her almost. Um, obviously she was the adult and she was in charge, but I just always felt like there was a part of me that had to be there to support her, whatever, whatever was going on. I think that that has sort of stuck by me, but I think with the, on the emotional side, and as we were sort of chatting about over the weekend, like I, I don't, I don't keep a lot of people around me, let's say, but I do know that the people around me, that if I had something going on and the same with them, like if they had something going on, that was like, they needed to a literal shoulder to cry on or whatever problem was going on. Like I know that I could have that space or I could hold that space for them. And I think that even just being safe in the knowledge of that, um, on both sides for me, knowing I have the space and for me, knowing that I can provide it for people, I think gives me great, I guess, a sense of calm in it because I know that I have a space to go to if the shit does hit the fan or whatever's going on. Like I know I have a place that I can go to and I know I can provide that for other people. And I think even, you know, I guess on a, on a slightly different level, um, this is something that I've observed sort of within the, specifically within the BC fam community. Um, you know, people are willing to come in and share their struggles. And I think the, the one thing that, that I see within it, it sort of breaks down the barrier of what you're expected to be in quote unquote, the real world. So you can go in and I can just be Ben, or you can go in and you can just be DF. You don't need to be the partner or the parent. You don't need to be the CEO. You don't need to be the business owner. Like you can just go in and this is the shit that I have going on as Dave and I'm sharing it with you to see if it, you know it'll give me space to share it, but also if there's any sort of feedback on the other side of that. And that's one thing that I'm grateful for within that space, because I don't think there are a lot of places that people can turn to or know that they can turn to whenever they have something that they want to vent about or rant about, especially if they are, you know, I guess if you're working from home and you don't necessarily see work colleagues and you have to go from parent to partner to being in work that you don't necessarily have the outside world or the escape or the other people to sort of turn to or vent to or run to so having that that sort of space to lean into the things whenever you're struggling i think is is important for sure and as you said you know within the tribe and having a space to feel like it's okay to just express whatever you've got going on yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the expression piece, and again, I can't emphasize enough the, the tribe aspects. We've talked about this on the podcast a lot. And, and even with this injury, you know, um, you know, when I, when I announced that I had a, a stress fracture, the amount of outpour that I got from folks saying, Oh my gosh, are you okay? You know, um, you know, anything I can do to help out, um, you know, what, what do you yeah, need? Can you come and lift this 505 pound deadlift 10 times for me? <laughs> it's funny. It's funny uh, 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 I got some new gym equipment delivered, you know, of course, um, recently. And, uh, you know, my first thought is, uh, I'll be fine. I can, I can handle this. And then I'm like, you know, no, I, I have friends that will come over and help me. And I literally called, you know, a couple of my buddies and they were right over, you know, 10 minutes later, right over my house, help me move them, move them in and have to do anything. Same thing for the party. You know, um, all my buddies were helping me run the wiring and I didn't have to, to walk around or carry a lot of big things as I'm going through trying to give my, my boot a rest. So, you know, you have friends, you have support, um, that can help you regardless if you, you know, fractured a foot or, you know, done other things, uh, you know, lean on your friends in those, those times, uh, to, to help you out. And, you know, again, I, I know, um, it's in our nature to, to not ask, you know, for help or to do whatever we possibly can to, you know, push ourselves forward or look tough or strong, but, you know, it's not a sign of weakness to ask, ask help from friends and to see how things are going or, you know, to just reach out in general and, and have a discussion with them. It's funny. My buddy, Sean was my best, best man at my wedding. Uh, and him and I were, friends going up, you know, back since I was in, in middle school and, uh, he lives in, in Texas and, uh, you know, we, we, we keep in touch obviously with, from a family perspective and, you know, we hadn't talked to each other, I think in six months. And, uh, and he called the other day 
And uh, it was like we hadn't, you know, we, it's like we had talked every single day because, you know, we're right back to normal. Everything's great, you know, catching up on family and friends and what's going on in their lives. But we don't need those those daily touch points for for best friends, right? We just we know that in a drop of a dime, if there was something wrong, fly right out, help them out, or vice versa. We always have that friendship and bond. We're always keeping track of everything, but we're busy as well. We're all you know running these daily lives. There's no reason to talk to each other, you know, once a day and and see how they're doing. But and I knew I know that if if I had that issue, I could reach out to a few select friends, and and they would be there to support me. Wouldn't judge me for for going through things. So, you know, the biggest thing for for men um, is you know, be more expressive uh, of of when things aren't good uh, and and ask for help. Uh, you know, I I um I always try to be the the first of all, you know, uh, Aaron is incredible at everything she does and keeps the household together. Um, you know, I always try to be the strong figure in the household when it comes to you know pushing through things or getting stuff done. And uh, Aaron had mentioned to me the other day, she's like, I just appreciate you so much because you know when you come home from a long day's work. Um, you know, you're not going and taking a nap or things like that. You're changing light bulbs or painting walls or fixing doors or, you know, you're just still going at it throughout the day. She's like, I don't know how you do it. Uh, and I'm like, well, I just know things need to get done. So I just focus on continuously. It's my job, it's my job right? You know, it's my job. As, as, you know, I keep, I keep, I do the tough things, uh, you know, because, you know, I'm supporting the family and everything else that goes along with it. And it's not to say that Aaron doesn't do tough things. She does, you know, I mean, dealing with the, the kids, she's, you know, our, our, our CFO, um, she's incredible. She does all the things. And, I, and I, that's exactly what I said back to her. I'm like, you do tough things all day long as well. It's just in a different light, right? We have different roles uh, within the household. And, you know, that's kind of how all of this works together to make this cohesive, you know, hodgepodge of, of DNA work, you know, together. And um, it's really an incredible thing when you, when you look at it, um, you know, mutual respect, equal you know, respect for one another and, and, and roles and relationships. But, you know, at the end of the day, there's certain rules that that I have versus she has. And I'm always the one that's expected to go and, you know, chop down a tree or, you know, do some something crazy dangerous that's, you know, you know, going to be, you know, uh, uh, something that I, hope I probably don't, I probably will get a big injury from or bleeding everywhere from. So yeah, that's what I do. That's what I, do. I smoke meats. I, I build stuff. <laughs> I break stuff. I fix things. You know, that's 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 my role, right? And uh, I love that. I, I wouldn't change it for the world, right? Yeah, and I think you know, to go a little bit deeper, I think you know, as parents, we have different roles in a sense. And again, as we were we were talking about over the weekend, like I think one thing that I want to provide for Harper is the that she knows no matter what she can come to me with whatever problem. And it's actually, I, you know, not me to be like listening to her mosey, but he was talking about essentially how um, he was disciplined whenever he was younger. And he told a story about how he snuck out one night and he came back and he got disciplined straight away. So that sort of internal thing to him was, well, I'll just not come home next time. So it's like how you, the way that you discipline the kids in the narrative that, that they tell themselves um, and exactly, you know, what you said, like if they go out and get drunk, you know, you're going to pick them up and ask no questions. So it's like how you approach those situations so that the next generation that comes after have the the tools to do potentially things that we have had to work out in a slightly different way. And Harper's so funny, like she's three and a half and she, whenever I was away with mom, there was a book about feelings. So it's like the A to Z of, of feelings. She's like, she's like, dad, I'm really frustrated. <laughs> like she's like the site looking at me. I'm like, what are you frustrated about? What's going on? She comes in, she tells me this big story. But like, even for her to have an understanding at that age about feelings and about like what's going on. And over the weekend, we were watching uh, Encanto. And long story short, basically one of the girls got left out of the family photo. She was like, but she's been left out. She's going to be sad. Like for her to be able to pick up that from a movie at three years old, I'm like, she's pretty in tune with emotions and with, with feelings there. And for me, like, like I said, you know, I want to be able to give her the tools that she knows how to navigate the world um, in the best way that she can. And I think that that as a, as a role, as a parent um, with emotions, I need to lead by example and show that I can express emotion in, in ways too. You know, it's interesting. You look at, um, you look at the differences between my, my, my daughter and my two, two boys, right? Um, I have very different relationships with, with both of them, you know, daughter, I feel very protective over, um, you know, wanting to make sure that she's, she's always safe and, uh, I'm there for her when she needs me, my boys, 
they can go get hurt. I don't care. Um, you know, so it's like, you know, very different roles and experiences. Right. I know that's, 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 you know, I, I guess that's normal or whatever, but I, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's interesting how you, you view the differences in, in, in their, their personalities, what they enjoy doing, like even taking them to the Taylor Swift concert, you know, while I jest a lot about going to Taylor Swift and for one, it was actually a really incredible show. I mean, I'm glad that you were able to admit it. Finally, I yeah, knew you yeah. would enjoy it. And I was a little bit jealous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was actually, it was actually a really, she's, she's an amazing talent and my gosh, you know, I don't know if there's anyone else like her in our generation that has been able to accomplish what she's done as well as how amazing she is in different genres of, of uh, music. And she plays guitar and is a dancer and plays the piano. And I mean, just, just absolutely incredible and seems super humble too, from, from everything I can tell. So, you know, obviously having that level of success and everything else, she seems like a, a really good person, but um, you yeah, know, but it was, it was great to have my, my daughter there and, and, you know, and have a, another woman strong role model that she could look up to, you know, for that. But I didn't want to take, you know, I didn't want to go to a concert. I did not, I, I did not, not want to be at this concert because I was too big of a guy to go to Taylor Swift. Right. I, I don't care about that. You know, like I'll, I'll That's wear. That's why you got the pink heart glasses on. You really fully embrace it. Yeah, 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 I don't yeah, care. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. like, listen, you know, uh, uh, but, but, you know, what was great is, um, you know, the, uh, when the, when it, when it first kicked off and seeing the excitement, you know, we, uh, it was Morgan and two of her, her girlfriends seeing the excitement on the kids' faces and being part of that moment. Uh, and, and so regardless of, of whether it was masculine to go to a Taylor Swift concert, or not, I don't care. Like, you know, like you don't have to like not go to your daughter's events and things like that, or not dress up in a, you know, outfit for tea parties or whatever. It doesn't make a difference. You know, I saw bio lane, uh, uh, lane, uh, Dr. Lane Norton, he was on recently and, and someone called him out. That guy, by the way, talks so much shit. Um, he is, he is a, uh, he is a personality man, but, um, uh, Dr. Lane Norton does a lot of, uh, sports medicine research and he's a power lifter, but you know, it was him, uh, doing a video and he had different colored nail polish on. And I was like, whatever, dude, if he leaves in a nail polish, that's totally fine. I don't care. You know, it doesn't make me think anything less or more of them or whatever. I, but uh, for me, yeah. having a daughter, I respect it more. Like, yeah, I was wearing a, a little mermaid ring all weekend. Yeah. And like, I mean, it fitted my finger to here. But I'm like, <laughs> why would I not do that? I'm not. Why not do that? Yeah, exactly. making her happy? Yeah. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. But it's funny because like someone called him on and he's like, yeah, I like my daughter more than I like you. And uh, she can get nails any time. So I was like, that's awesome. You know, like, you know, dads can be dad in any way that you want to and I don't even have to think about it and it's just the stuff the excitement the happiness that you see from your family I think is, is so important and again um you know you're expressing your emotions in, in different ways there right you're you're being vulnerable by the way you know uh you're you're supposed to be this like big strong muscular guy you know and all of a sudden now you're doing a public video with nail polish on I mean that's a vulnerability right um it really is but having the confidence in yourself and wanting to see your daughter happier than than who cares what society thinks of of what that is, who gives a shit, you know, like your daughter's happy. That's all that matters. Your family's all that matters. Your friends are all that matter. Uh, and that's why, you know, I look at, um, I've mentioned this before on, 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 well, I don't watch much of the news. I don't, you know, look at things that I can't impact because at the end of the day, who cares about that? Now I'm not saying there aren't things in this world I care about, but what are the things that I can impact in a positive nature and how can I rely off of a support system that allows me to be positive as well? Right. Uh, and I think that's the biggest thing that that most of us need. And we, you know, a lot of us are, are isolated or alone, um, don't have, you know, the communication or don't have that relationship that you have with friends or family. And that's where we start to break down as men uh, is when we can't express emotion, right? Yeah, and I think, I, I mean, it was, seems like a lifetime ago, the episode that we talked about, you know, whenever you ask someone how they are, ask them a second time to get how they really are. And one thing that I've tried to be very conscious of probably more recently is like whenever I'm talking to someone and they ask me, you know, I did it last week on, on the group call. Um, somebody asked me how I was and what was going on. Like, yes, it's quite easy for the, you know, everything's good comment and just like brush over it. Not that everything isn't good, but to give a little bit more context to what's actually going on. And, you know, similar to yourself, like a friend of mine, um, I went to school with, he lives in Qatar at the minute and every so often, like we'll chat and banter back and forward. And, uh, I was giving him shit about something earlier on. I was like, how are you doing, bro? And he just gave me a, yeah, all right, how are you? And I was like, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. I have not spoken to you in about a year. And you just gave me the, yeah, like what, like, how are you actually doing? Like what's actually going on? 
Um, so I give him back the response of like how I was actually doing, what was going on, filled him in, sent him like a four and a half minute voice note of just like the things that came to my head that wasn't just the surface level, yeah, everything's good answer. Um, I've noticed that he sent me through three voice notes after that. So it's like actually being able to have those conversations with people because it's easy to just be like, yeah, everything's all good and pass over it whenever fuck knows what's going on in the back of that person's head or fuck knows what's going on in the back of my head to, to ask a specific question. So ask it twice whenever I have some, whenever you ask someone how they are, ask them twice and give, I think give the, set the example by giving the, the true answer. And I, I really started to try and do it because whenever someone gives it to me, like everything's all good. I'm like, well, fuck that. Like, I don't want, I, I don't want the barbershop chat. I hate the fucking like, have you watched the football chat? Like, I don't want to talk about it. I want to talk about actual like yeah. conversations, like actual meaningful, engaging conversations. And that's why I don't talk to a lot of people because I don't get that in a lot of places. Um, so I don't want the the surface level chat because I don't want to give it back, I think is the thing. It's funny you mentioned that because most of the conversations I think that we have in general as men is very non-binding or non-personal, right? Um, it is sports. It is, you know, hey, how much did you deadlift? You know, it's really <laughs> that time and gap. And, you know, rarely do I I talk about you know, how things are going in my family or, you know, um, big event lives, you know, and things like that. You know, um, I had somebody that was messaging me, uh, you know, online and it was someone that I, you know, I, I'm familiar with, I've known for a long time. And um, I was just having a really bad day. Uh, Aaron was, was uh, uh, going to the hospital for, for something and uh, had an allergic reaction to some weeds and then her allergy shots. And, um, the person was just sending me fire after, you know, after, you know, message after message, after message, after message. And I'm sitting here, you know, trying to balance like life and home. And for me, like, I feel like I have to respond to people fairly quickly. At least I try to. And I responded back. I said, Hey, I, I understand that there's a lot going on right now that you'd like a response from. It's going to be a while. Um, you know, my, my wife is in the hospital and, you know, the other end of that was, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like take care of that. It's totally cool. Don't even sweat it. You know, like we'll get to this later. This is not important. So, you know, I mean, even for me to express that to somebody that, you know, is, is, is very different because I normally don't talk about, Hey, I was here or there. Now, obviously the ER stuff, he was very public because, you know, I was with, with a bunch of folks in Denver, <laughs> Couldn't <but> avoid it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, but, uh, you know, when it comes to, to personal matters and things like that, I really try to kind of stay a little bit more reserved, you know, to, to friends and family and have been getting better at that, I think over time, which, you know, again, meaningful relationships, meaningful conversations. I have a small group of people I, I really consider true friends, uh, you know, because it's a time thing for me. I'm, I'm busy all the time. Uh, and, you know, I prioritize my life around people that prioritize me as well that I, I know can either help me or you know, make me better or uh, I can make them better. Or I can help them. Uh, those are the meaningful relationships that that you, you want to have, not just, uh, you know, drive bys uh, that you, you meet at a conference or things like that. And don't get me wrong. You know, I really appreciate um people that I meet and, you know, hearing their stories and, you know, being able to, to understand where they come from and things like that. But yet at the end of the day, I don't consider them the bestest friend in the world. Uh, you know, someone that I consider super close, I would love to go have a beer with them, chill and hang out and talk. But the, the circle that I have as close friends is, is very, very small because of that. One in one out. That's why I describe mine. I'm at the minute, like one in one out. Good so if, if I have an availability, yeah. I'll let someone know. Um, but I think, you know, you're exactly right. Even with, with that chat about being in, at the hospital with Aaron, like you, we almost have this expectation that we need to feel like we have our shit together to everyone. And we want to be able to respond quickly because we want to look and feel like we have our shit together. But in actual fact, everything could be fucking on fire. It's like that emoji, everything's fine. I'm fine. And everything's on fire <laughs> around the person. It's like, that could actually be the reality of it. And you're just trying to, uh, I guess keep up appearances in terms of having your shit together. And sometimes you just don't and almost like normalizing that part in, in itself and being able to show that, okay, yes, I do run a successful business or successful businesses. I do do this and I do look like this and I do have my shit together, but sometimes shit is difficult and I don't, and that's okay too. And it's okay for other people to be okay with that as well if, in their own lives. Yeah. The, the, uh, it's interesting. Like I, I, the conversations that I have with, with most folks are just, you know, high level, right. Even, you know, when I was at the party too, you, know, you have 150 people. I'm just thinking about party. our um, morning texts. It's real high level. Yeah, conversation. Yeah, with, uh, well, we always, we always go pretty deep, but um, 
you know, the, uh, the, the, you know, the party, I have 150 people. I can't have meaningful conversations with 150 people in order is it the appropriate time to really do that. Um, but you know, it's, it's interesting watching my kids go through similar experiences. Uh, you know, my son recently, uh, got into a tiff with one of his good friends, right. And, you know, they're, they're good friends and they're very similar in nature, uh, to, to one another, uh, both brilliantly smart, uh, super sharp kids, emotionally intelligent on, on each front. And, you know, you can tell because we have this online, uh, thing going on that we didn't have as a kid. So, you know, when we were kids, you know, if you were pissed off at your friend, you'd punch them or get in a fight or wrestle with them or, you know, do something, but you'd be able to have that, that outlet, that valve, you know, to, to release the emotions in that point in time, right? A lot of these kids don't necessarily have that. And they don't have that human interaction piece between one another, you know, to see expressions. And I think it's something like 85% of our way that we interact with humans is, is actually visual, not audio. Um, and so you look at, at, at that and you say, well, if, you, if you're online and you're, you know, fighting each other on Apex or Fortnite, and it just keeps building up and you don't have that release. And you think the person's doing something to you, you know, negatively and vice versa. And it continues to build this tension. And all of a sudden you don't have that release anymore. It bubbles up to a point to where, you know, it turns into something major. And it's interesting because the, the way that fights work today are very different than, than before, right? It goes on for a long period of time. You know, it, it's, it's, it's very, very um, in depth, uh, you know, and it's funny because they'll text each other back and forth escalating or they'll apologize via text, but it's not in person. You know, you're not, you're not getting that human interaction piece there. And, you know, it's interesting if they were, you know, if they're just were able to sit down and hang out and talk through what the issues were, I guarantee you would have been resolved, you know, very, very handily. And, you know, uh, Aaron and I make a, make a point as well. Like if we're upset um, over, over text messages, we stop, we stop talking. Uh, because you don't get to see the reaction of the other person or what they're going through or things are misinterpreted because you don't have tonality or, you know, maybe, maybe they're busy and they're just short and you're, you perceive it as they're, they're mad at you. So, you know, we, we are very careful on, on text messages to one another as I am with my kids and everything else. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, cause they, they were able to work it out and they're, they're back to being friends again, which is, which is great to see, but the, the fights, they go differently than, than when we were kids and they last longer and it builds up a lot of pent up emotion that, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, um, you know, isn't healthy. They, they need to be face to face. They need to see each other, they need to work through that, whether it's punching each other and throwing each other on the ground and getting it out of them. Um, those are the things that, that, that have to happen in order for you to really understand, you know, emotions and relationships with others. And we do the same thing, by the way, as adults, if you haven't noticed, uh, you know, adults will sit there and talk a bunch of smack online and, you know, don't, don't, uh, address things. And it goes through text messages and it gets bubbled out of proportion and, you know, these are the things that, that, uh, you know, are obviously concerning from my side because you really can't express emotion through text message. You can't really get that feeling of, of what the other person is saying without being there in person. So, you know, we have a lot of work to do when it comes to the technology age and being able to express emotion and be able to see somebody, um, and to be able to, to understand what, where they're coming from and understand their perspectives. Uh, that's one of the things that, that really concerns me. But we, again, have to do that at both men and women, uh, need to do that when it comes to how we're handling situations. Yeah, and I think with the like with, even with the text message thing, like it depends what headspace you're in. Do you know what I mean? You could read the same message seven days in a row and be in a different headspace and get something different from it each time, like react in a slightly different way. And I don't know about you, but even some of the emojis, like some of them do not mean the thing that I meant them to mean. Like they only send the the one emoji like flat out and then actually realize what it means. It's like, oh shit, that's not in the context that I was meaning it whatsoever. So while emojis are great, they do not necessarily express your proper emotion. Um I think it just it does come back to I guess, you know, to to take it back to the in person events. You'll know this that there was a big shift from the first one that we did when we were in Cleveland to Nashville because there was a lot more time and actual human interaction and a lot more, I guess, higher level, deeper conversations that were had to like solidify the bonds between the people who were there and the same, same in Colorado. And like, we don't, you know, we don't often get those spaces because everything is online. Everybody fucking works from home. Everybody's busy. Like you don't necessarily ever carve out the time to actually engage with another human in any way. Um, and it's not something that I do very often, but it's something that I do really value. And I'm, I'm away this week, um, over to London to, we're going to, me and Matt are going to see Simon Sinek and Stephen Bartlett, but Matt is someone I talk to literally 
all day, every day, and not someone I ever really have a conversation with to the point that at the weekend he had um, his video videographer, Harry, there. And he was like, I need to set up a fake Zoom call, so can we Zoom so that I can actually have a conversation with you? And I was like, it's so weird actually talking to him in person. Like, not in person, but virtually. Like, it's just not something that we do in terms of, like, our friendship. But the same thing, like, I know that if I had a problem, I could phone over. I know I could send, like, the shit's hit the fan. I need your help. Um, so being able to go, long story short, to London, like, there's a lot of things like, oh, yeah, we'll talk about that or we'll catch up on that. And it's like, none of these things actually ever get done because it gets lost in yeah. the next problem and the next message and the next fucking text message. So I'm looking forward to that going and um, actually hanging out and seeing my person. Yeah, the, the, again, the in-person piece, you know, you can have a, a slight relationship, obviously, remote. And things like that. It's just gonna, a good story um, for... Aaron and I is that you know we have been dating for 22 days and then I, I shipped away for a year to, to Iraq and we were able to maintain a relationship right and it was a combination of both mostly audio um surely because, no like texts back and forward like not back then no texts uh you know purely <laughs> audio and some visual you know we had a we ended up having a, a internet cafe towards the end of it which was nice um that I could we could text back and forth with and you know it was really good to to at least be able to see her but I would say you know 90% of that was just talking to one another, right? Um, and and you have to kind of train your brain to be more audio in nature, right? Uh, because you know, you this is a person that you love and that you, you know, you're you're building a relationship with. And then, you know, at the end of the day, like you're really not seeing each other, you're not getting that physical contact, you're not getting the emotional pieces of that, you know, that are tied to that. And and that's a very difficult thing to to really go through. And what's interesting that when I first got back from from Iraq. Um, it was, it was a little bit awkward at first when we first saw each other, like, you know, I, I was on my dress blues, just got off of the airplane. Uh, and there she is, right. Uh, this, 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 this woman that I've been, you know, dating for a year and a half and hadn't seen her. And it was, uh, you know, for the first few seconds until my brain caught up with the audio component of it, it took a second to realize that this is, this is the person, right. Uh, which is really a, a very unusual feeling, you know, cause you, you know, this person inside now, you know, everything about them, you're probably closer on understanding them than anybody else, because you have to uh, communicate through audio. But, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, I had to take a step back and say, this is who I've been talking to for this past year, you know, uh, uh, over over audio. And uh, that was just a, an interesting piece there. But, you know, again, uh, you know, summarizing this up, and I did have- Is one, it like one whenever one. I first flew to Cleveland and you were like, what if I don't get on with this game? Yeah, is that right. the same thing? Like, am I yes. second tier to that? Yeah, yeah, very, very similar. I'm like, dude, it's kind of weird, you know, seeing in person. Plus, you know, again, if you were going to be short bent, it wasn't going to go well. So, um, but uh, no, you know, it's interesting. Um, uh, those types of scenarios, when you when you develop those things online, again, you don't know the person's reactions, mannerisms, what that actually means. You're actually relearning everything again. And uh, but I will say, it's it's interesting because you know, Aaron and I can really survive anything when it comes to you know relationship because we did a year in Iraq, you know, high stress zones, everything else. But you know, I had to be emotional over the phone about what I was going through and expressing that that way in order for me to be okay, healthy wise in my mind, uh, as well as what Aaron was going through, you know, over those times. And, uh, she was incredible. She, uh, you know, sent me pictures all the time as far as like her hanging out with my mom and, you know, the family members and, you know, uh, all of those things. So she was super supportive while I was gone, uh, and, you know, keeping me, you know, feeling like, uh, you know, I, I had a, a person to come home to. Right. And, uh, that was just an amazing thing too. So. And how's your tattoo? It's really good, man. Tattoo's great. Yeah, it's uh, she. In fact, uh, Aaron uh, uh, said today she's like, it looks really good on the chest there. That was a perfect placement, and I uh, love it. So it was, it was a. Uh, that's that's all that matters. That's all I care about. So, um, but uh, tattoo's going to get all healed up. Nice, good, good. I'm glad. So we'll wrap it up, and I'm excited for anybody who hasn't realized up until this point. Probably about five episodes ago, we well, I. Uh, use the cohost.ai feature of on Buzzsprout. Um so if anybody's wondering where the fucking weird and wonderful scripts and titles have come from it's there. So I'm excited to see what title we get from this because essentially I just upload and it gives me a choice of titles. Um but to round things up from my side I think the important thing is understanding that uh, having those deeper levels of conversations are important because we do live in a world that is majority online. It's very fast paced. It's like you know, what do you need from this person or what does this person need from me? Can I get it done and move on to the next thing? There's not a lot of situations that you can sit and actually have a conversation and probably even on a deeper level than that, like actually sit in someone's company and be okay with actually 
being silent and not feel like you need to fill the spaces with the fucking barbershop chat. Um, so be able to have those conversations, ask the person how they are for a second time um, to find out what they really are. But lead by example and actually give more than just, yeah, all good. If you obviously feel comfortable with that person. Yeah. Last thing I want to hit on really quick is, um, so ultra human sent me their, uh, uh, glucose monitor, uh, here. So I have the CGM now and it's a, it's a, it's a modified, it's actually a modified version of Libra two. It's not, not modified. It's a, it's a certain like, uh, countries have different restrictions. So this Libra two is, I think from, I want to say it's from India, uh, and they have less restrictions on like open APIs and things like that. Um, I, and so, um, it's a kind of an open version of, of Libre 2, which is really nice. And, uh, uh, popped that on yesterday and, uh, com combined with the, uh, the ring, you know, the ultra human ring, uh, been a big fan. Uh, it's actually really awesome because it shows, you know, obviously my, my glucose relationships, but it also incorporates then, you know, your recovery scores, um, how you're doing, um, and, uh, being able to kind of like look at your whole body from, from that side. And it, what's nice is like. When you're when you're using an app like Whoop, for example, or or uh, or those, you know, you're at least for me, I try to stay consistent with like recovery and sleep and things like that. What's nice about it is it it ranks your glucose scoring as well, so how well you did the other day. So I can kind of keep you know my movement ranking, my recovery and sleep ranking, and my activity ranking, you know, all within one consistent area now, as well as my glucose ranking around how that's going. So I really enjoy the pairing of that, and those folks are really killing it. Um, they just added. Um, you know, SPO2 monitoring as well. Um, so that's been a, a big addition that they, they added uh, most recently. So, um, you know, obviously it has steps as well, which Whoop does not. Um, I'm really enjoying these folks uh, so far and they're super responsive. I mean, the guy sent me a bunch of clothes, like, uh, you know, shirts and swag and things like that. And uh, also sent a couple of glucose monitors with it. Uh, really impressed with with where they're heading. And I think they're going to continue to be um, you know, a growing company from from everything I've seen. Very cool. Yeah, and they're, they're, I mean, they're super helpful. Like I ordered my uh, air, and the the girl that sent me the CGM Tanya that works for the company, she reached out. She's like, oh, I just let me know if the sizing kit arrived, and I was like, no, I didn't order one. And she's like, I'll check and see where your order is. And I was like, cool. Like I was told four weeks, but I mean, if it's here sooner, then I'm absolutely fine. And I think, like yeah. you said, the the pairing of the two data pieces is is huge. Um, and I think it'll be cool to sort of pull all that data together for sure. Um, a company that I'm on board with, I'm very excited about. Yeah. Well, thanks all for tuning in for this week's episode of Hacking Your Health. Uh, that hour went by really quick there again. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, lessons learned is that, you know, strong mind, strong, strong body, strong mind, strong body um, equates to having a, a pretty awesome uh, life that you go through. And, uh, you know, when it comes to, to dopamine uh, being released in your body and the feel good pieces of it, if you're getting it through exercise or getting it through expressing uh, your emotions, not bottling things up, not letting yourself get, you know, get out of control. Um, these are the things that, that, you know, cause a lot of success and positivity, as well as success in business, success in marriage, success in your family. Um, all of these things are so important for us to be able to run through. And, you know, the, the reason for this podcast today, I was, you know, you know, confining in Ben this week, weekend. And, uh, you know, thought it was important to talk about mental health of men and how we are, you know, typically closed off and in nature and, and all of those things. And it's just important for us to be able to recognize that, express our emotion and know it's okay uh, to confide in similar tribes or other people or people you trust, your friends, uh, not a sign of weakness, sign of strength. So thanks for tuning in this week. We'll catch you again next week uh, for, for an amazing episode of our new podcast. What? 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 <laughs> See you next week. Podcast.